Hi everybody. Uh, who knew that we would be in our house today uh, doing virtual <laughs> church from our home. This is not something we're very used to and um, we just thank you so much for joining us um, together in my house. I, I sure had no idea that we would be here but uh, God did, and we're just so thankful that you're here um, joining us in our ACFO ch ACFOC <laughs> Homebrew Church Edition. So, um, I mean, in a matter of weeks, we've seen the coronavirus um, upgraded from a pandemic to an epidemic, or an epidemic to a pandemic. We've seen the stocks crash. We've seen them rise. Um, we've seen flights to Europe canceled indefinitely. We've seen the NBA season completely canceled. We've seen Disneyland close. Um, and just a couple days ago or a few days ago, we even had our governor um, basically tell us all to stay home. Uh, needless to say, these are really, really uncertain times. And, and when there is a lot of uncertainty, um, what often ends up happening is there's a lot of fear in the the wake of that. And so before I say anything more, before we really get started um, today, I, I, I just want us to remember that, that though things are very, very uncertain for us, um, everything that is happening in history right now is as clear as a summer's day in Yosemite to Jesus, really. Um, uh, and though things are completely out of control when it comes to our senses and our eyes, um, Jesus is still ruling on high. He is moving history exactly where he wants it to go. And in Revelation, we read these amazing words. It says, one day he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, from our eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall be there be any mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. So fear not, God says in Isaiah, for I am with you, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will hold uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so um, now I'm going to pass it over to Jen. So it's a little, little unorthodox of a worship service, but um, I picked out some songs that I, I thought would help us kind of focus on not only the message that, that Pastor Chant will share today, but also kind of just what we're all going through during this time. And um, it's going to be just portions of songs and um, should be easy for you to follow along with our fancy um, screen here that I've got with the, we should have lyrics. Um, but the songs speak to the idea that we are in, you know, at all times, but especially now we're more aware of it. Um, we're in, in need of God. We really, we rely on him. We need him. And, um, the strength that he provides uh, lets us know that that he's got us in his hand. He's never going to let us go. Um, and out of that knowledge, we praise him. Um, so we sing, how great is our God. And uh, we hold fast to that. And we we will never lose that faith that we have in him. So we're going to sing these, these four portions of songs. Some people are saying they have no sound. And... Uh, do people, can people hear what's going on? We're pausing temporarily. If you can hear me, raise your hand. <laughs> if you can hear us, please tell us in the broadcast that you can hear us. Well. There may be a, a lag for some people, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Um, if you can, sing with me. You'll have the words. You can just sing at your own tune, at your own pace. If you can't hear me, then sing along. Um, we know that we're united um, as we praise the Lord, even though we're in separate homes. We're all singing to Him um, together. So let's, let's sing together.
Bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. I need Thee, I need Thee. I need Thee every hour.
Well, uh, thanks for joining us in our worship time. Um, and I just want to say, Charlie, uh, flipping, flipping, flipping uh, slides is not as easy as I always <laughs> thought it was. So good job on that, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> um, well, this week I uh, spent a lot of time in prayer uh, asking the Lord what he would maybe have me say to you all this afternoon. And, and, and I'll just be really, really honest with you. Um, what I landed on really wasn't what I quite was expecting. At first, I, I was certain that I was going to be talking to you about how Jesus comforted his disciples and their fears. Um, I thought I was going to talk to you about anxiety or uncertainty. Uh, but several days ago, I, I was on this uh, very couch reading this very Bible um, and during that time, I was just praying and, and asking the Lord, you know, God, what do you want me to speak about? What, what is the right thing for me to say to people um, during this time? And as I was reading the Bible, um, I reached an account in the Gospel of John that I have read and heard a million times before. And... Uh, it was the account of Jesus washing his people's feet and uh, his disciples' feet. And in that account, uh, Jesus gives his disciples a command. Uh, he gives them a command that's even more familiar uh, to me than even that account. It's a command that all of you probably have heard a million billion times before. And that command is to love one another. And after I read that account, it just struck me because the Holy Spirit at that moment, just I just felt that he was impressing on me that, Sean, this is what I want you to talk about on Sunday. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, so if you will, uh, turn with me in your Bibles to John 13, 34 through 35. John 13, 34. 34 through 35. And let's read that together. This is what Jesus says. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, Jesus says, you will, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Now we got to remember Jesus was about to be crucified in just a few moments. In just a few hours, he was going to be arrested. And as, as his di disciples were about to go into a time of total chaos and confusion that night, in those few days, the one command that Jesus wanted to burn into their memory was to love one another. In fact, a few chapters later, in chapter 15, Jesus says it again. He says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, what exactly did Jesus mean when he told us to love one another? Why does he want us to love one another, even in these sorts of times? And we need to ask ourselves what Jesus means by this, because in our culture, loving one another can mean a lot of different things um, in different circumstances. For instance, I can um, tell you that I love Chikufta, and I really, really do love Chikufta. But I can also tell you that I love Jen, and those two things mean two completely different things. And so we got to be clear on what we mean when we say love one another. What is Jesus getting at when he says that? Well, Jesus tells us what he is getting at when he says love one another, because he says in the second part of the verse, he says love one another, but then he says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And so we are to love one another as Jesus loved us. And in the immediate context, what Jesus did for his disciples is 
Even though he was the son of God, he humbled himself and he got down on his, hand, uh, on his knees and he washed his disciples' feet. But even more so, Jesus did something that was completely out of what anyone thought that the son of God would do. He died for us. He suffered for us. In fact, in John 15, 12, he reminds his disciples and he wants them to remember that this is the type of love that he wants them to have one for another when he says this, this is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. And then he clarifies what he means by that in verse 13 when he says, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay his life down for his friends. And so ultimately, the kind of love that Jesus is calling of us and asking us to enter into is a humble, self-sacrificial, service-oriented love. Jesus is calling our community to have a radical love for one another. He's asking all believers to exhibit a radical love to each other and the world. And the reason why Jesus asks us to love like this is multifaceted. For one, when we love one another, we show people around us that we belong to Jesus. We show people that we're different. That's what Jesus is getting at in verse 35. But even beyond that, in John 4, 17, we read this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. You see what ends up happening when we learn to love one another is that fear in our life loses its strength. It loses its power. The reason why we often fear is we believe the lie that God is not for us, that, that he is not protecting us, that he really does not want the best for us. But when we love God and others, what ends up happening is we start forgetting about ourselves completely. And as that ends up happening, the Holy Spirit and Jesus can start working in our life and our fear starts to melt away. And so the encouragement I have to us all is to love one another even during this time of suffering. But then the question <laughs> comes, the very practical question arises in our hearts. And, and, and that is, well, how can we love one another? When we're not even together, physically speaking. Well, it's really, really going to take some creativity to love one another during this time. Um, and if you do have some suggestions on how we can love one another, I, please, I encourage you to write it in the Facebook feed below this. But I did come up with some ways in which we could perhaps love one another during this time, and, and I'll share some of them with you. Um, I, I have four, okay? The first thing that we can do to love one another during this time, I think, is simply to love the people around you, the people that you're hunkered down with. Most of us are stuck at home with people that we are not usually used to being in such tight spaces with for such long periods of time. And so being, cre <laughs> so being creative in how to love one another during this time is a really important thing. It's, it's a really good practice, I think, right? Um, so husbands, maybe uh, something you could do is wake up early and uh, cook some breakfast for your wife and your kids. Um, wives, uh, maybe you can uh, show some love towards your husbands by not criticizing them if they uh, don't make the breakfast right or if they don't do the dishes on time or something like that. Um, kids, you can love uh, your parents by cleaning up after yourself even before you are told to. Um, you can love your brothers and sisters by uh, sharing with them. Um, 
So those are some simple ways. I mean, if Jesus was willing to die on the cross for our sins, we can surely do these simple things to love one another. I, another thing I thought of, um, another way in which we can love one another, I think, is simply by calling each other during this time of separation. Um, we're, we're not really close to one another. We can't spend time with one another physically, but we can call one another. And we can call one another, not because we need something, but just because we can ask each other how um, we're doing. We can empathize with one another. We can pray with one another. Uh, this leads me to a, a, third, a third thing, uh, a third way in which we can love one another. Uh, and that is by serving those who are most at risk. Uh, maybe when you call or make a phone call, you call someone, an elderly person, or you call someone who has pre, pre-existing conditions. The coronavirus affects those people the most. And while you're having that conversation, you uh, realize that um, they mentioned the fact that they don't have enough eggs or something, or maybe they've run out of eggs or they've run out of milk. And so a way you can really love them in a very practical way is by uh, maybe going to like, 15 stores to find um, just one carton of egg to take um, to their home. And that would just be a very, very loving thing that you can do. Even though you can't really go and visit them, you can run some errands for them. And finally, um, perhaps the fourth thing that we can do to love one another is um, maybe even the most important. And uh, that is uh, by praying for one another. Um, during this time, uh, during this uh, kind of time of suffering and uncertainty that's going on in our culture uh, right now, there's going to be um, a lot of people who are in who need financial help, who are sick, who are grieving, uh, who are in a lot of pain for various different reasons. And maybe one way in which you could love them is by simply setting aside uh, 15 minutes of your suddenly completely um, open day to uh, um, pray for them, uh, pray for that person in need. Uh, so I'll encourage you all to do that. Spend, spend this time in which you're separated from one another to pray for one another. And so as we just kind of end our time today, I, I, I want to do just that. Um, I, I, I want to pray um, just in that way. Uh, as many of you know, um, just a, a few days ago, uh, Chuck Rome um, from our congregation um, lost his nephew, and uh, Dave Rome uh, lost his cousin. Uh, he was only 34 years old. Um, he lost him to the coronavirus. Um, his name is Jeff Rosarian, and um, it's, it's just a tragedy. Uh, and his family family really, really needs our prayers at this time. Um, and so I thought that we would just end our time together um, by lifting this prayer request uh, to the Lord. So if everyone out there in the virtual space um, of the internet... <laughs> Could, could just join me in prayer um, for, their, uh, for this family, for the Lazarian family, and also for the Romes. Um, I, think, I think that would be a fitting way uh, to end. So let's bow and bow our heads and pray. Um, Father, I pray for the Romes and the Lazarians. This is a time of tragedy and this is a time of suffering. Um, it, it's that for our entire nation, but it's also that for these friends of ours. And um, Lord, I pray that you would comfort this family right now through your spirit. Pray that your counselor your spirit is our counselor. And so I pray that um, he would show up in their life in a really powerful way and give them the true hope, Lord, that uh, Jeff is with you. We know that Jeff was um, knew you well. And so, Lord, I pray that um, you would just comfort them with the hope that comes from knowing that, that he is with you and safe with you. 
Lord, I pray that you be with Jeff's family, um, Rich and Sh Sherry and Lauren and Allison, um, his sisters. Lord, I pray that you would comfort them as well and that you would get, grant them a peace that passes all understanding, Lord, even in this time. Um, we pray that you would show up in their life and love them and encourage them through just, just unexplainable comfort of your spirit. We pray for that, Father, and we pray that we would just learn to one another, love one another in just very, very creative ways um, during this time of tragedy. We need, the, we need you, Father, and we pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing one more song together. Um, this one's not as familiar. We've sung it a few times in church, but I just love that. You know, even though we're all in separate homes and, you know, across, across the county, some of us even out of county, um, you know, we can, all, we can all sing to God. And as we sing, we're, we're one and united in that. And um, as, we, as we learn to creatively love those people around us, um, we're also uniting Christ's kingdom and showing him in these dark times and that's that's such a beautiful and powerful thing and so um let's let's sing this to the lord and um just know that we're singing together Sing as one, Lord, we are your children. 
And so now is uh, now as we close, we're trying to get a good shot here. Now as we close and get ready for get ready for that, there is a final way um, in which we can <clears throat> love the body and love one another, and that is by uh, giving of even our finances. Um, Doing our tithes to the church, yes, but even even more than that, perhaps during this time um, with the virus and, and a lot of suffering that's going on, uh, one way in which you can help is by uh, giving to those in need. Um, we can pray for those in need financially, but a great way to do that is also by uh, being willing to actually sacrifice and give financially for them. And so um, other than your tithes, give your tithes, yes. But if today you feel led um, and you would like to give to the benevolent um, fund for the church, um, we, will, we will use those funds to help uh, those that we come across during um, this time of tragedy uh, to help them, uh, those in need who maybe lose their jobs or other things like that. So um, pray, uh, so pray about that and, and you can tithe and you can see, you can tithe to ACFOC to 77977. Now, uh, as we close, um, join us in our final song. And uh, I think I'm gonna, Jen told me to sing with her on this final song. So you're actually gonna hear me sing with Jen because this is, um, what? Home church? Yeah. Home it's home church. church. And I have no idea how to sing. So if you don't sing loud enough at home, this is going to be really embarrassing and it's going to hurt your ears. So let's uh, <laughs> let's join together and praise God. This one's from 1977, guys. But it's got perfect words for now. So if you know it, sing with us. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Everyone sing loud. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with words that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Bind us together with love. Bind us together with love. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do also for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. Uh, Jen and I will be praying for you all, and we hope that we'll get better and better at this every week. Look for our emails, and uh, that'll tell you how you can connect during the week um, as a community. Um, there's something up on the screen right now. This is, uh, hopefully it comes up on your screen. This is, uh, this is a Zoom address, and you may not know what Zoom is, but that's uh, you can actually click on that, and that's a way to join in on a prayer room where we can all see each other's faces and pray for one another right now. Maybe you have a prayer request. Uh, maybe you want to talk about the message. Uh, maybe you just want to talk, but join us together in this prayer room. Um, Pastor David will be there. We're going to give this a try and see if it works. Um, but uh, we just pray that the Lord would bless you uh, this week. Bye, guys.